Why, hello there, peasants and princes alike. Shams Nelson here from Fantastic Anatomy with another character design study. And in this uh, video, we're going to talk about um, sugar, spice, and everything nice, which are, of course, the ingredients used to create the perfect little girls, the Powerpuff Girls, with a little chemical X. Now, I always thought that the intro to the Powerpuff Girls was great because it describes like their character it's basically like you could have handed that description to the animators and been like all right there you go that's all you need uh they're made of sugar spice everything nice they're the perfect little girls they've got chemical x which makes them super powered their ultra super powers they use them to save the world all right so they're going to be cute little girls with superpowers to save the world now let's see what the uh character designers did to convey this message and that's going to be the idea behind this uh, study and also that uh, I have some it's a kind of a special um, episode because I found some really cool pre, uh, pre like um, what are they called production uh, production images like you'll see what I mean it's cool so let's start off talking about the colors and then after that I'm gonna be showing you a lot of black and white stuff so when you're working with uh, children's characters or characters aimed at children um, usually primary colors and really like basic colors like the primary colors are uh, red yellow and blue because you can't mix any other colors to make those and then the secondary colors you've got green purple and orange um, so those are usually those six colors are like the most fundamentally appealing I guess and the most bright and vivid so you'll see there's a lot of saturation and they've used uh, all these primary or secondary colors, but I consider those all like basically the primary colors. There's no, there's no strange, you know, they're very basic. Like a kid can point and say blue, red, green, you know, very straightforward. And um, in addition, I thought that it's interesting how the colors reflect each of their personalities a little bit. So we've got the uh, out of these three colors, the blue and the um, the blue and the green are cool colors, um, and then the red is a warm color. So this is significant because it sets uh, blossom, yeah, bubbles, blossom, buttercup. It sets blossom apart from the other two, and also warm colors, especially red, is very like it catches your eye. And red conveys a sense of um, it can be danger, but it also can be like to get your attention, like stop signs. A lot of signs will be in red. Fire trucks were originally in red. Actually, they found out that lime yellow, like electric yellow, attracts eyes better than red. So some of the newer fire trucks are like that. But red is a very eye-catching color, a very uh, powerful color. So that yeah, makes sense for her. Uh, bubbles, they used a really light blue. Um, you know, I think it looks nice. It's cute. I'm not sure if there's deeper significance in that. Blue is a very calming color, so that would make sense for her. It's more relaxing. She's got a relaxed personality. So I'd say that's what her, uh, the color on her symbolizes. And then we've got Buttercup, who's green, which is not a, um, I don't know. I feel like it works. Huh. If you know, if you got a reason why she's green, um, if you think you got a good reason, yeah, put it in the comments. But, um, but yeah, so that's basically the idea behind the colors. Now let's look at the shape. Those are going to be two huge things to, I'm going to try to work from like the biggest things down to the details. Um, so let's look at the shape. And this is what I was talking about, about production, production imagery. I think that's what I searched to find this. If you look it up, you'll, uh, you'll be able to, um, to find these images online and stuff. There, uh, so, okay, so let's look at the basic shapes. First off, you'll notice that everything on these characters is pretty much rounded. So you've got the head is round. Uh, the ends of the arms and feet are round. This is rounded slightly. It's not come to a perfect point. The only things that are pointed, well, you got points here, but this teardrop shape is very unintimidating. But you'll see more points in Buttercup because Buttercup is the more, like, kind of dangerous, sharp, hardcore personality. So you see even, like, her little hands form points, which because uh, she often crosses her arms, which neither of these other characters do. So then the end of her fingers actually kind of, or her hands kind of form points. Uh, obviously the, the main one I thought was these little things, which almost look like little devil horns, the way they, they turn up. Um, there's a little, in where her hair parts, there's a little thing, but they also have that. 
um, but you'll see on bubbles that point right here is is less severe it's less sharp so it's another way to soften bubbles up because she's the softest of the personalities and um, the other thing I was going to point out is if you look at the silhouettes uh, here's a good example of all three lined up Blossom is taller than them they're actually exactly the same size physically but this bow makes her taller and that combined with the red really distinguishes her on a subconscious level as a leader and uh, she also has this little heart here so she's got little accessories in her hair that show that she's somehow different than them and even on a subconscious level I would say she's elevated above them because of this um, because of this uh, hair, hair thing she's got going on and uh, the other thing I was going to point out is that uh, I'll switch up the slides so that we can uh, get a little more variety we've got a bunch of slides to go through so I'll keep it moving but look at this they've got the exact same physiology their anatomy is the same they're two heads tall round head same shape uh, pill shaped head um, same feet same arms same dress everything's the same except what did they change they changed one the color to the hairdos and that's and then also obviously the personalities so like you can see that buttercup is frowning and angry um, I mean, I guess Bubbles and Blossom have similar ones. So it's interesting because when you're creating like a superhero team, I'm going to go back to this uh, color slide. So when you're creating a superhero team, um, you have to somehow have, you got to have, and this is actually a general rule in composition and creating things, is you want to have a, um, like similarities or continuity between the characters, but differentiation too. So, um... So what they did is, usually with superhero teams, let's say the X-Men, they'll give them all the same costume, or the same colored costume at least. You know, an X, yellow, and uh, blue, I think it is. For the, for at least, the, that's what I think of as the X-Men outfits, the yellow and blue. So, um, so they're all wearing that, and then you can say, okay, these guys are all X-Men. Whether it's Beast, who's a blue, uh, like, big buff guy. Whether it's Cyclops, you know, he's got, whether it's a girl, a guy anybody professor x in a wheelchair even he doesn't wear the suit but if he did you'd instantly or maybe he does sometimes i don't know or his wheelchair i think is kind of similar to the color scheme but the point is yeah those things bind those all together as being one superhero group but um it's interesting because the powerpuff girls actually did the opposite they bounded them together as being a group based on their physiology no one else in the powerpuff girls world has well i think the rowdy rough boys did but that again kind of they wanted that connection but they're very they're unique in their physiology of having a big head a little body these shoes these round hands I guess the shoes and the dress could be considered uh, a uniform because it's got the one stripe and the same shoes but um but I think what really binds them together is their physiology and then they changed other things to show how they're unique individuals so I thought that was a really cool way for them to um, to kind of tackle that problem of making them a unified group while still letting them be individuals uh, within the group. And so you'll see here they're small. I mean, this is cool. I don't want to say too much about that. So this is one of the great uh, uh, like pre-production uh, uh, artworks that I found. And it was a little blurry. I couldn't find a better, what's it called? I couldn't find a better like resolution or size. So what I did is I just retyped these after looking at them so you guys could check it out. So I'm guess I'm, I'm gonna go through each of these and we'll just read them and maybe I'll comment about it. But really, it's like the they did the work for me. They're already telling you what I would be telling you. So let's just go ahead and do that. Let's zoom in here. All right. So when they're moving around, one thing you'll notice a lot in these is that the line of action and the flow of your characters is super important. So the streaks here follow the line of action. Like and you'll see. Um, look at Bubbles little. Uh, hair things are following the line of action. Blossom's um, bow is following the line of action. Legs and arms following the line of action. Okay. Uh, girls are less than two heads tall. So um, that's uh, that's just a basic proportion. Important, the white shape inside the shoe indicates the direction the leg is facing. So look at these little details that the creators came up with. Like, if you look at these kind of drawings at first and you're not an artist or you don't think about it too much, you're going to say, all right, very simplistic, you know, it's almost childlike. Uh, kids could draw this kind of thing. But no, it's not. They're actually very sophisticated. And it takes a level 
of understanding and like skill to create something so sophisticated that is seemingly so simple. I mean, that is actually like, it's on purpose. So, um, so look at that. The white shape inside the shoe indicates the direction the leg is facing. So now you can see that her body is tilted, pointing this way, to the right. Um, while, you know, I would, if I was just drawing this, like, without knowing or thinking about it too much, I'd put it right in the middle, always. But that doesn't convey the direction they're facing. You, 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 without the little tiny detail there, you wouldn't really be able to tell that the body's facing this way and the head's facing that way, which creates a much more interesting and dynamic stance and composition. Um, Blossom's bow and hair can curve with the line of action. So see, they using these... One of the things I've been coming across a lot doing these character design studies is that many times design trumps realism, and especially in something cartoony like this. Like, it doesn't matter if her bow would move this way. I mean, I think it's reasonable that her bow would move this way. But, like, let's say it bubbles, her hair points in all different directions, you know. And, um, anyways, the point is, if it looks good, it makes sense to do it. Um, and if it conveys a, a, a meaning that you're trying to convey. Let's see, the arm separates from the body for certain poses. So you'll see here, she's grabbing, uh, you'll see it a lot here. This is, uh... And it looks great, but it doesn't make sense anatomically. Again, design trumping uh, like what's most realistic. Because this arm would not reach that body from here. Unless it's like right there, it'd be so skinny. You know? Um, same with here. It doesn't seem like... You should see it like wrap around here, I guess. If it was really connecting, maybe. You see, uh, But it doesn't look as good as a little round thing. It's cuter, you know? So, um, so yeah. That's a big thing, design making design decisions like that. Use Bubbles Pigtails as a design element to complement the direction of the pose. Again, line of action, direction of pose, you're using that. Here there's a lot going on, so they're pointing in different directions, creates more of like a chaotic feel, like whew, we're in the midst of the action. Uh, the direction of each leg should complement each other for, for flow. Again, we're looking at the flow of the character, which direction they're moving and everything like that. Um, you know, this is weird because it doesn't have as much... Oh, I guess the flow would be like that. But, uh... Tan okay, on down shots, top color portion of the dress disappears to indicate overlap and depth. So it's like these seem like such two-dimensional characters and so simplified, but the animators thought about, like, how can we show depth here? The head looks clearly like she's leaning forward um, because the top of the dress is cut off. Again, tangents are okay for certain... Or not again. Tangents are okay for certain poses. Again, design... I mean, like, this is a design decision. It's kind of cool. They've stylized this character, and they're pushing that. Mad brow are straight. Oh, mad brows are straight, I'm supposed to say. All right. Uh, buttercup crossed arms. Buttercup's crossed arms have a slight overlap, okay? It's a cool to see, like, this is what, like, let's say you were hired to work on a Powerpuff Girl thing. You, you, you're you an animator. You'd get all these this info, and then you'd be able to kind of, like, you know, you have a lot of detail and things to remember to work with to keep the style consistent. I think it might even be considered a style guide. Alright, let's zoom out a little bit now. So now we're looking at the head. The, there's production, pre, uh, these these sheets, I keep calling pre-production imagery. I don't know if that's right. I hope it's fine. But anyways, I got a lot of them. So they go for each part of the body. So we're going to go through them real quick. Um, I'm not going to spend too, too much time because I don't want this video to take forever, but um, you can look them up on your own and go into more detail if you're interested. So the main thing on this one is that the head is a pill shape. And see how specific they're getting? It's not a ball, it's not an ellipse, it's not an egg, it's a pill. And, um, you know, those are, they're very subtle, like an ellipse and a pill. Okay, well, this is a little, this part is wider on a, on a, on a pill type shape than ellipse. Um... The other thing is, okay, think of the head as a ball. Features are painted on. So the features, they should wrap around the contour of the head. The features are kind of flat on the Powerpuff Girls, but the head itself has volume. And so that's important uh, to remember. And then it's, it's cool how they show them, like, yeah, art's not too high or far apart, not too close together. Like, they really looked at every um, hairline should curve a bit, every little detail. And it's fun, like, oh, it's like this, and it's like, like, you can tell animators are fun people, you know. You're not gonna work on this if you're not a fun person, but probably. Uh, hopefully not. <laughs> so, um, 
Okay, we got uh, just a lot of details. I love how they do the eyes. I think that's really great. Like, look at the eye keeps its shape. But then, like, this doesn't make any sense. Again, it's a design decision that's based on what looks good instead of what's realistic. The eyebrow, the eye should go, you know, the, uh, the closed eyelids should go across the whole eye, but it doesn't. And it looks great. It looks cuter that way. So that makes sense. Hairline can disappear on upshot. See, they do keep in mind perspective and all this stuff. Um, we just did eyes, right? Yeah. So now the body. So the body is a basic triangle. Um, keep the legs short and cute. <laughs> you know, uh, it's, it lines up. The legs come, they line up with this outside thing of the body. Uh, and like, don't make the belt too high or low, fat or thin. And it's interesting because there's no inside to the dress. So how I was saying, like, they keep in mind that there's perspective and stuff, but they also, you have to keep, they wanted it to be stylized. So they're, they're carefully controlling that balance that like, okay, there's perspective. Maybe see how the line of the dress curves upwards a slight bit. So that kind of indicates that there's some perspective. But then if you put that on the bottom, then you're getting into a full 3D model and it kind of gets away from the stylized, cartoony, 2D feel of the Powerpuff Girls. Another thing is that design elements like the belt, if there wasn't a belt there, you wouldn't have this design element to uh, define volume and direction. You know, this would look very flat. So, it's see, that's a careful balance that they've achieved between too much uh, form and realism and not enough. Without the, without the stripe, it would be very flat. You wouldn't be able to tell which direction um, the form is moving and uh, which and what how much volume it have how round it is The arms look at how much detail they put into thinking about this um, It says there's a curve versus a straight It's uh, the girls arms are are muscle. They're solid not flat. Okay um, So they round it so you put a rounded thing instead of like a flat little thing uh, they're not weird and flexible too much like that. They're like a butter, I like how they say, think of it like a butter knife. Ends in a slight point, not rounded. Like a butter knife. And one of the things this, these, uh, these sheets of pre-production sheets, uh, model sheets, maybe they're called model sheets, here's main models, I don't know. Anyways, what they, uh, what they convey is ways of thinking a lot of times. Like, think of them as a butter knife. Think of, you'll see in this, in the next one, in the legs, look at this. Think of the f girl's feet as socks filled with wet sand. Like it, it that thinking of thinking of them that way gives them volume and weight, and it conveys the idea. Like you can almost feel it. You know what a bag of wet sand, a sock with wet sand, would feel like. And uh, so one of the things I've noticed in my own journey of like learning to draw and stuff like that is that uh, the what you think, the way you think, is like more important than your physical skills or like like you because you always have to think when you're drawing for instance I'll give you an example to help illustrate my point uh, Frank Frazetta I believe it was he's one of my favorite artists and he uh, when he's making a drawing apparently he talks himself through it meaning like he'll draw and he'll say like he'll draw the arm and he'll be like oh this okay so we're gonna have the arm pulling back here and this arms grabbing this rope and uh, and he's just like, you know, like stuff like that. Like he literally, I think, talks aloud when he draws so that he's, and I feel like that's a reflection of how he's thinking. You know, it, it's really the thoughts that put the energy and emotion and feeling and all that stuff into a thing, into a, a work of art or a character or anything like that. Because um, you can even, like I've said this before, if you have a really simple drawing, like even juvenile, to, to like a stick figure, uh, I like Order of the Stick, for instance, is a great show, but there's so much life and there's continuity in the stick figures. And so it's a simplicity. The drawing is very simple, but it's not it's not childlike. There is sophistication to it. I mean, maybe it's childlike, but it's not like childish. It's not um, very simple and like a child couldn't do it. You know what I'm saying? Even though it might look like it. There's a lot more sophistication behind it. And the idea of making it childlike, like in this show... I think it's, I don't even think of Powerpuff Girls is really aimed at children. I mean, maybe the demographic is uh, children and adults. Maybe they're trying to do the whole spectrum. But the reason is Powerpuff Girls is very violent. It, rep, uh, it uh, kind of references anime. Like, I remember they use shots straight out from Dragon Ball Z. 
like when uh, there's one episode of Powerpuff Girls where like someone shoots a beam at her and she just moves her head to the side like crooks her, and it goes right by her head and if you guys watch Dragon Ball Z you know exactly what I'm talking about and then the explosion behind her and she's just like super cool and like those are you know like this seems like it's for little girls but like full grown guys can appreciate the show because these little Powerpuff Girls are badass and the irony of that they're just little girls but they're like super powered and beating everyone up you know and characters like the villains like him and fuzzy lumpkins like they're weird characters that adults can kind of relate to like him is the devil you know and fuzzy lumpkins like a like a hick like backwards you know like really violent kind of uh you know so so adults get that while kids will be like oh he's a funny character but they might not get the cultural reference so i think they did an amazing job on powerpuff girls um appealing to both adults and children you know the full spectrum so let's see, uh, real aid arms are smaller, so look, the arms change, uh, size and stuff, always taper arms, okay, and don't let them look like ears, okay, so the, the sock weights, um, and you see there's elasticity to all these things, like the arms and legs, they can stretch to help basically convey movement and feeling and mood and stuff better, and, uh, um, you know, they, they, here I said they stick to that, the legs don't, they say you can cheat and just, and get rid of the side. So that's another type place where they're choosing design, simplicity, and like aesthetics over realism. Uh, don't make the taper too wrong. Curve versus straight. This is a big one that I need to personally apply in my work more. But curved lines against straight lines, really big thing for creating aesthetically beautiful stuff. Um, cool. And then when the bent knee is egg shape, all that great stuff. Alright, so I was going to do a little drawing. Uh, I think this video was kind of long, so I'm trying to make it quick. But let's try to apply some of the things we learned. And, um, and yeah, use it to uh, make, make a drawing of one of these Powerpuff Girls. So remember, first thing is, we got the pill shape. Alright, and so what I'm thinking is like something like this. Maybe I made it a little too wide. Oops, let's make this right. So you get the pill shape. It gives you enough room for so like something like that. I'll draw the body and then I'll go over it with a pen to do like. Alright, and then it's about two heads tall. So one, two, let's go down here. Remember that the legs just follow this design here. Okay, and then the uh, stripe, not too big, not too thin, not too thick goes over, uh, shows the volume and stuff. We've got, I think I tapered it too small here. Let's do like, remember we had the little hand, so she's like a hee hee hee, maybe they're like giggling. And then the eyes are cool, so let's first do the hair, who should we draw? This is, see now look, this could be any Powerpuff Girl at this point, until I, um, until I add one of their, let's see that, like, so, like that. Until I add one of their uh, hairdos, then, you know. So let's, this looks like Bubbles. She, she's really cute. So let's do that. She's like giggling. Maybe she saw a squirrel or something. All right. And let's see what the line of action is kind of going like this. So how can I convey that with her? Since it's not like a lot of action, I'm not going to point it up because I would make it feel like she's jumping or something. And I want a, a calm mood. So I'll, I'll have her little things pointing down like that. See, they're kind of following this line maybe it could even have a more but no it's not that important there's not a lot of action going on so I'm not trying to like force a line of action that much but here you can see like boom line of action and then this actually I guess the line of action could be considered going down and so this is kind of bending down you see it's not it doesn't have to they didn't make the bow I mean that wouldn't even work but they didn't make the bow point down they just kind of they did a little bit you know to start to indicate that here's the line of action on this one and uh, here's line action on that one, so it's down, I guess. And she's sitting down. If she was jumping up, then these things could be going up like that, you know? Doesn't that already kind of give you the sense of, whoo, she's moving upwards? I even jumped a little on my seat when I, drew it, when I said, whoo, she's moving up. All right, these crazy big eyes. And I think they have, like, what did they have? One, two, three. So it's like one, this is the iris. Two, that's the pupil. And then three, we've got this highlight. And it's interesting because the highlight, oops, 
That doesn't make sense. That makes her look crazy. All right. Well, I didn't practice too much on the eyes. Um, so, but I think, uh, you know, this, these videos aren't about producing awesome drawings. This is about conveying ideas and uh, giving you guys the basics to either draw them yourself or design characters that are similar, not similar, but have, you know, using these to inform your design decisions when you're doing your character designs. So I think that's it. I'm going to wrap it up here. I'm not going to go over this and uh, make it all finished up or anything like that. But um, I guess I will point out that this is too long. So what I might do is just grab this right here, move it all down. Uh, oops, that's too short. Well, whatever. I think you guys get the point, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day. Peace, God bless, and stay fantastic, everyone. Only the wise subscribe.